Introduction. The goals that never happen. How many incomplete goals do you currently have on your agenda? If you're anything like the vast majority of us, then chances are that you have hundreds of projects that you started and never completed, countless goals that you told your friends but never saw through and all kinds of dreams that seem to be getting less and less likely to come to fruition. And it's for this reason, that you may find people roll their eyes when you tell them your next big project. When you start a new training program to lose weight and everyone, including you, knows that you're likely to have lost interest by month two. Or when you talk about the app you intend to make, the website, or the business project. Or when you talk about that dream trip to Japan. This is the way of things for many of us. We work incredibly hard at things we don't feel passionately about just to put food on the table but when it comes to fulfilling our dreams, we are remarkably ineffective. It's time to change all that and to start making those goals happen. But how can you turn it all around? How we're going to fix your goal setting and help you to start living the life of your dreams accomplishing goals is about strategy, it is about making a cognitive shift to change the way you're thinking and it's about being smart about how you approach each goal. It's also about knowing how to choose your goals and even how to phrase them. This book is going to show you how to make those changes then. You'll learn how to choose and write goals effectively, how to write effective action plans and how to make sure you stick with your goals and never give up. But this book is going to be a little different than most goal-setting tomes, too. After we've given you the broad tools you need to start setting and accomplishing your goals, we're then going to take a look at how you can begin to put them into practice. Because while a goal can be pretty much anything, for many of us they are going to fall into one of a few different categories. Most of us have goals for our relationships, goals for our fitness, goals for our careers and goals for travel. We're going to provide not only the abstract strategies you need to start making effective goals then, but also the step-to-step -step processes that will let you apply these strategies in each of these areas. By the end of this book, you'll be adept at setting and accomplishing any goal. And at the same time, you'll have powerful strategies for improving your relationships, your fitness, your career and more. Ready to change your life? Chapter 1, The Most Powerful Skill You Can Learn, Goal Setting Learning how to set goals properly is arguably the most powerful skill that you can possibly learn. Why? Because it will allow you to then accomplish a huge range of other goals. When you know how to set goals, it allows you to effectively work toward anything. This is the key to unlocking pretty much everything you could want from life. So ironically, the first goal you should focus on is the goal of setting goals. And until now, you've probably been doing it all wrong. The problem with your current goals how can a goal be wrong? Sure, any objective is a worthwhile one, but the way that you phrase your goals and structure them, is going to massively change your likelihood of finding success. Let's take weight loss as an example because it's one of the more straightforward goals that is easiest to implement. When you set out to lose weight, you should start with a concrete goal. And for most people this will look something like this, lose two stone by next year, this is a terrible goal. Why? First of all, it is far too vague. How are you losing weight? Weight from where? Why do you want to lose the weight? What do you actually want to look like? At the same time, it's out of your control. Even if you are completely committed to your goal, you may find that outside forces prevent you from being successful. Maybe you get ill, maybe you accidentally follow the wrong program, maybe it turns out you have a bad metabolism. Finally, the goal is too far in the future. If your goal is to lose weight by next year, that then essentially gives you a license to procrastinate. The target is so far away, that you indulge yourself in a little overeating or put off exercise for a while and not worry about it until next month. What good goals look like so, what does a good goal look like? How might you phrase this same objective in a manner that will increase your chances of success? The first thing to do, is to focus on things that are immediately within your control and that are not influenced by outside factors at all. These goals should be things that you can accomplish in a guaranteed manner and that you will be immediately graded on on a pass-fail basis. So for instance, instead of aiming to lose two stone by next year, you would use this goal, I will work out three times a week, every week, for at least 15 minutes, how to formulate your goals but that doesn't mean that any short-term goal that is binary in nature is going to cut it. First of all, you need to know what you want and make sure that the goal you are setting for yourself is going to help you get there. You need your goals to be intrinsically motivating and that means that you have to feel truly passionate about them. It's only be following a goal you really feel excited about, that you will find you have the energy and motivation to keep going. Working out for 15 minutes a day is an effective goal because it is sure to take you closer to your broader goal of losing weight. By keeping that end goal in mind, you should stand a better chance of staying motivated to work out even when you're feeling tired, or when you're feeling low on willpower. 
Chapter 2, The Formula, How to Structure Goals and Make Your Plan Now You Know the Basis of What Makes a Great Goal, It's Time to Actually Start Building These Kinds of Goals for Yourself. In this chapter, we'll lay out some simple instructions that you can follow to begin putting these ideas into practice. Later we'll be applying this same formula to different areas of your life, so that you can start going after a better body, better salary and better love life. But in each instance, we'll be reapplying this same strategy. Step 1, Visualization The first and most important step is to visualize what you want and to really understand what you want. We already discussed this a little in respect to becoming richer. Often you'll find it's not really the money that you want but rather what that money represents in terms of your lifestyle or your status. The best way to get an idea of what you want from life in any given area is often to just visualize your future. That means closing your eyes and just calling to mind your ideal future. Where are you? What do you look like? What do you do for a living? Who are you with? By picturing your future in this abstract way, you'll be able to start analyzing what it is that you're actually trying to accomplish and from there you can begin to look at the more concrete steps you'd need to take in order to get there. From there, it's also a good idea to think about the actual reality and to visualize what it would be like to get there and to live that life. Do you still want it? For example, it's very easy to want to be a rock star in theory but you might not like the actual lifestyle, it would mean spending a lot of your life touring, being in the public eye and probably struggling to raise a family. Step 2, assess your situation honestly and thoroughly The next crucial step is to assess your current position versus the ideal one that you have visualized. This is where you're going to analyze the gulf between real life and your dream future and then try and find what the best way to bridge that gulf is. Making an honest appraisal of your current situation is a very important way to assess your current position and to thereby to get an idea of your strengths and weaknesses. And in particular, you need to think about what advantages you have, what networks, what contacts and what opportunities. You may feel that you have none but that probably means you just haven't been thorough enough. As the saying goes, there's no such thing as a lack of resources, only a lack of resourcefulness. Step 3, formulate a plan This brings us to the next step, which is to formulate a plan on the basis of your current situation, where you want to be and what options you have available to you. For losing weight or getting into shape, this means looking, for example, at the different training programs. However, by making the honest assessment of yourself and your situation in the last step, you should be in a better position to choose a system that appeals to your particular strengths and weaknesses and that you are actually likely to see through. So many people will pay for expensive training programs that involve eating a very strict diet and working out 10 times a week for an hour each session. But is that really realistic? If you've tried to stick at previous workouts and have failed, then the answer is probably not. When you assess your current situation, that also means assessing where things went wrong in the past and what your lifestyle and personality will allow for. And by knowing this, you can then look for a training program or devise one that will work to your advantage. Maybe that means finding a way to fit CV in around your regular routine, or maybe it means sticking to a diet that you will find enjoyable and convenient. Chapter 3, How to make your fitness goals happen We've seen the basics of how to accomplish your general goals, now it's time to accomplish specific goals. For this chapter, we're going to look at fitness and how you're going to apply the principles we've discussed to getting into awesome shape. So the first thing you need to know is why you want to improve your fitness and what you want that to really look and feel like. Is your goal to get fitter so you can play sports again? Do you want to look awesome for your own satisfaction? Do you want to be powerful so that you feel more physically intimidating? Chapter 4, How to make your career goals happen Too many people have mistaken ideas when it comes to their approach to their careers. We often believe that working incredibly hard in jobs that we don't truly enjoy is responsible and what adults should do. We often feel that we don't really have any choice when it comes to what we do for a living. We often feel scared to try anything else. And this is why so many of us are unhappy in our careers, we just let them happen and accept the career path that we fall into. We leave school or college, take the first job opportunity that comes out way, and then work hard to progress up the ladder. We never take a moment to actually ask, is this what I want? Do I have a choice? That is to say that you should be able to get the same satisfaction from a hobby. We often feel that our sense of self-worth and achievement is tied up in our careers and that we need to work harder and harder in order to feel like we're progressing in life. But while you might be CEO of a logistics company, you are still ultimately in charge of making sure people get staplers, when your passion might be painting works of art. Creating a foolproof strategy we've addressed the power that fear can have over us and the way it can prevent us from going after our goals. This is especially true when it comes to achieving things in our careers. 
and for that reason, it makes sense for us to take a look at some of the things we can do to make our career goals less risky. The same goes for starting a part-time business. You don't have to immediately transition from one job to another when you can simply use your spare time in the evenings or in the weekends to work on your new business idea. Only once you are certain it works should you then consider leaving your current job in order to take on the new one and this will present you with another risk-free way to transition to a job or career you love. The path of least resistance remember, genuinely going after something you want means taking the most direct and practical route to getting there, the path of least resistance. In this case, that means creating a business idea that you can realistically accomplish, or designing one around your current contacts and ideas. One common mistake that a lot of people make is coming up with ideas they think will change the world. If that is your vision, then it doesn't also need to be a money-making venture to begin with. But if your vision, step one, was to become wealthy, maybe to gain financial independence, then the most effective way to accomplish that goal is to focus on tried and tested methods for making money. Chapter 5, How to Make Your Relationship Goals Happen Relationships are something we often don't think of as goals, but they are in precisely the same way as any other. Maybe you're single and want to be in a relationship? Maybe you're in a relationship and want to make it better? Maybe you just want more success with the opposite sex? These are all worthwhile goals and all of them can be subjected to the precise same strategy that we looked at before. Taking stock here though, perhaps the most important aspect to look at is step 2, appraisal. You need to really take the time to assess the current state of your relationships and of yourself and then to work on moving forward and improving those areas of your life. This starts by looking honestly at your current relationship. A lot of people will remain in unhappy relationships because they can't face admitting to themselves that things aren't perfect, perhaps because they have a child or house together, perhaps because they love their partner. But note that improving your relationships doesn't necessarily have to mean ending your relationship. You can work on a relationship just like you can work on a car, or a business. You can improve the way the relationship works, improve your happiness in your role and generally see positive change over time. Would you be happier if you had more sex? Are you getting enough time to spend with your partner properly? Do you argue more than you'd like? Sometimes, it is just a case of making some simple changes which can help you to improve on those areas and your relationship will be better for it. Don't live in denial. Likewise, if you currently aren't having any success with approaching people, or if you're single and you don't want to be, then you maybe need to address certain aspects of your game in order to change how you are coming across. This is a skill that can be learned like any other and often it comes down to appearing confident and presenting yourself well. If you can do that, without coming across as arrogant, then you will have much better luck approaching people. Often people who never have any success in dating are portraying themselves in the wrong way. Maybe you're too shy to approach women, men and this means that you never get to choose who you date. Maybe it's a confidence issue and you feel that you can't approach them without being rejected. Or perhaps you approach but you are coming across sleazy, awkward, or generally unattractive. Chapter 6, How to Make Your Travel Goals Happen What about travel goals? What if your goal is to see the world? Again, we apply our steps which means we look at the kind of travel that we want to accomplish then work out a way to make it happen that is feasible considering our specific circumstances. So we start again with visualization, picture the type of traveling you want to do, know what it is you want to get from your traveling and think about the different ways you can accomplish those broader goals. Then look at your circumstances. What is holding you back? Budgetary constraints? Family responsibilities? Fear? Then make your plan based on this information and break it down into small steps. Again, this might mean thinking outside the box and taking the non-obvious route to success. You don't necessarily have to take the obvious route by taking a gap year and traveling to various far-flung reaches of the globe. Alternative travel strategies perhaps you don't have the time or budget for that and would get just as much from traveling more locally? There are some incredible things to do see and do in the US if you're in America, or if you're in Europe then you have the whole of the EU on your doorstep. This can present just as much adventure and variety and even if it's not exactly what you initially thought, it's still going to scratch that itch and that need for exploration and discovery. Or how about just going for a shorter time? You can have a truly life-changing experience in just three or even two months. And you're much more likely to get a sabbatical lasting that long and be able to save the money. You can even change your strategy entirely and try taking lots of very small trips throughout the year. This might also be something that is easier to convince a partner of, versus going traveling for moths at a time. Money-wise, you might be surprised at how little you need to travel if you go during non-peak seasons, if you stay on people's couches or if you use Airbnb. 
That means that you can earn a little money online to fund your travels. Or how about asking your current job if you can be sent abroad? If the business has branches all around the world, this may very well be viable. Likewise, there might be a role that involves travel, or you could just apply for a job that involves travel. That way, you travel while earning money and have a good explanation for your other half. And there's no reason you can't take your partner with you either, of course. Conclusions There are many more types of goals that you might choose to pursue and where you might choose to use this formula. For example, you might have goals that pertain to your finances alone, maybe to your property, maybe to your social life, perhaps your goal is purely to learn a particular hobby, or to improve the way you dress. The whole point of this system is that it can be applied anywhere and when you do that, it will help you to really understand what it is you want and to make those aims concrete and tangible. This takes them from being dreams that you end up putting off forever and turns them into a series of steps you can use to make that happen. Sometimes this might mean reassessing your goals to make them that bit more achievable but if you're smart about this, they won't be any less rewarding. Maybe you can't be the next Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolie but there's no reason you can't start playing bit parts in movies if you think about how to structure your life around auditions. It's about knowing what you want and then assessing the quickest way to get as close to that ideal as possible. And as soon as you start trying, life becomes a whole lot more rewarding and amazing. It's time to stop dreaming and start doing. It's time to make it happen.